Hello and welcome back to another 101 Lab. Today, we'll be using HPing for security auditing and testing of network devices. HPing is an open source packet generator and analyzer for the TCP slash IP protocol. It is often known as a Swiss army knife as it can perform a lot of packet related functions for security testing and auditing. For this lab, I'll be using Kali Linux. We will begin by viewing the help information screen by executing the following command, hping 3 h And this shows us how to use the tool as well as some common tags such as dash h, dash p, dash k, etc. that we can use with this tool. The default packet which hping will create is a TCP packet. This means that even if a device such as a router or firewall is blocking ping requests, we can still perform host discovery and reconnaissance with hping. Note, it is important that you have permission to scan your target. For this lab, I am using my own cloud server as a target. You can get your own cloud server for the purpose of this lab at the following link. The link will be provided in the script for this lab. We will perform our first scan using the SYN flag. This will send out the same packets as Nmap would when performing a dash SS scan. We will also check if port 80 is open. Type the following command and you can change the IP address with your own personal server. So HPing is now sending out SYN packets to see if port 80 is open. Note that in my scan, the packets came back with the flags or A set. This indicates that the port is closed. If the flag was set to SA, the port would be open. And as you can see here, the flags are RA, indicating that port 80 is closed. If we want to perform a more detailed scan, we can scan all the ports beginning with one. We can do this by adding the increment switch plus plus one after the port switch and the port number where we want the scan to begin. For example, hping 3 s IP address dash P plus plus one. So as you can see here, this is the ports that it's targeting. And previously we were only targeting port 80. So this will increment through all the ports of the machine and gather whatever information it can. We can perform a number of IDS and firewall evasion tactics with HP. The first of which is called a fragmentation attack, where an attack will be fragmented across multiple packets to evade the IDS and firewall, and then have the malware reassemble at the target. This attack is only effective against older firewalls. Let's create this attack. All we do is add the dash F before the IP address. And I have set no flags here, and this port is closed, port 80, so this attack will not work against my particular machine. HPing has the ability to not only craft any kind of packet, but it also allows us to place whatever data we want in those packets. For example, if we had a malware file which we wanted to transmit to a target, we could use the fragmentation technique and load the malware across multiple packets, where it would then be reassembled at the target while evading the IDS or antivirus software. Here's what that would look like. hping f IP address p80, so we're targeting port 80, dash d10, e malware file. So dash D is the data payload size. Here it is set as 10 bytes. And E tells hping3 to grab data from the file, in this case, malware file. This can be a .exe or .txt file or anything like that. This command will send the contents of the file, malware file, to the target on port 80, 10 bytes at a time. hping also improves on the traceroute ability. Traceroute uses ping to determine the location of servers, firewalls, routers, etc. This can be very useful for hackers looking to create a network map of their target. And for this reason, many firewalls do not respond to ping packets. HPing does the same thing, but uses TCP packets, which all firewalls will allow, as otherwise it wouldn't allow internet traffic. Let's try this now. So you can say hping-z-t1-sgoogle.com-p80. Perfect. So dash z will connect the command to the control Z on the keyboard, so that each time it is pressed, the time to live is incremented by one. Dash T sets the initial time to live. Dash S sets the flag type to SYN, a sync flag. Dash P80 sets the destination port, which is 80 in this case. So every time we press control Z, so as you can see, the time to live changes here to two, and then to three, and then to four, etc. And we can iterate through all of these using the control Z in the keyboard. As you will see, there is one device between me and the Google server. If there are more devices, you simply keep hitting Ctrl Z until you reach your target server. So in this case, for example, 
we have the server IP here and the server IP here. So there's just one device in between me and the server. And this shows it leaving my machine and reaching the server. We can also use HPing in order to aid us in, man of, in the middle attacks. HPing can intercept and capture an operating system sequence numbers. Sequence numbers are numbers assigned to packets which tell the destination server slash router how to piece the packets together. To conduct a successful man in the middle attack, we need to predict the sequence numbers. We can use HPing to get to the target system to respond with its sequence numbers, and then we can decipher what algorithm the operating system is using to create them, allowing us to create our own. We can do this using the following command, hping 3 q s googlecom p 80 And Google is now responding with the sequence numbers. In this command, the dash q is responsible for displaying the sequence numbers. HPing can be used to tell us how long a server has been up. This is useful information for a hacker, as each time a server is patched or updated, it must also be rebooted. If we see that a server is up for five years, we can be sure that the server has not been patched or updated in that time, and therefore it will be vulnerable to all vulnerabilities discovered during that time frame. We can do this using the following command. HPing 3-tcp-timestamp, and then the domain and the port. It's important to note that this will not work in a VM with the network address translation settings enabled. In this case, in my VM, it will not work as I have these settings enabled. HPing is a really useful tool for auditing both firewalls and servers, as well as other networking devices. And that brings us to the end of this lab.